So we'll start recording. I'm going to start with a reading from Anna today. So Anna says, I might have read it last week, but I really like it and flowers are blooming in my yard. It's called The Beautiful Flower. The beautiful fragrant flower of compassion blooms in the fullness of divine love. Compassion does not see faults and weaknesses or distinguish between good and bad. Compassion does not recognize boundaries between nations, religions, or beliefs. Compassion has no ego, thus no fear, lust, or emotionality. Compassion simply forgives and forgets like an open passageway. Compassion is the expression of pure love. So, perhaps bringing compassion into our practice, if we come to a point where the body might not be quite able to do a pose, that there's always a way to modify the pose. So with the spine nice and long, Feel free to state your own intention, maybe to bring more compassion into your practice, whatever that might be today, whatever it is you need on your mat today. It might change from time to time when you get on the mat. And nice full breaths. And then when you're ready, we're going to open the eyes and we're going to give ourselves a compassionate hug. So your hands will come on to your shoulders, give yourself a little hug. And then we're going to lift the elbows up, the gaze up just a little bit and stretch out through those elbows. And then we'll bring the gaze and the arms down, even chin in towards the chest. You can round the mid back just a little bit here. Okay, and then we're going to come up. Release, change arms. So another hug, you can even rock and roll a little side to side. And then we're gonna inhale, start to look up by lifting the chest and the gaze. Elbows can come up, 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 up towards the ceiling. And then we'll bring the gaze down, elbows down, let the chin go in towards the chest. And let it be heavy here for a moment. Even your hands on your shoulders can Maybe help your shoulders come forward and feel that stretch in your mid back. Okay, then we'll lift the head up and relax the arms. So I personally need a block over onto the right side. You may or may not need it, but I'd like your hip to stay down, but your forearm to come down onto the block. And then we're gonna take that back arm, your left arm up, just straight up for a moment, and then round it forward. And then that hand can come on to the opposite knee. So you're just gonna roll the shoulder forward. I feel a nice stretch down through quadratus lumbar, no doubt. Now, if you don't need the block, but your hip will stay down, you can come on to your forearm, okay? It's a little too much stretch for me right now even though I've already done it once this morning. And then we're gonna take that left arm to the back wall or over towards the left, bring the fingertips on your shoulder and then shoot the arm over towards the right. Now you can let that shoulder come forward a little bit and feel what that does for you. And then you can roll the shoulder blade on top of the other shoulder and really stretch out through those fingers. And you probably have to concentrate a little bit on that back hip, the left leg, to keep that leg down, the hip down. And of course, you could do this in bound angle or any other seated posture if cross-leg doesn't work for you. And then I'm gonna bring that left arm out in front, really stretch it, and then roll it back overhead and this time you might take your torso a little bit up towards the ceiling or your chest and your gaze. So we're starting with some nice side bends, but I have 
to say, I feel it in my back foot a little bit. Okay. And on the inhale, we can come on up. Just pause, take that in. Notice how open that left side might feel. I'm going to switch the cross of my legs for a little variety. If you're using the block, just take it over to the other side and hang over. You could even use that right hand to encourage the hip that it's going to stay down. Okay, so we're going with our warm ups and then we could take that <clears throat> fingertips towards the shoulder and then shoot it out. But I want to keep that hip down and check if it's not, you know, you might have to come up higher on that block and you might not need the block at all. Okay. And then roll forward in the shoulder, bring the hand down onto that knee, left knee. And then you can even roll forward a little bit more on the shoulder. So my torso is coming forward a little bit, but the hips staying down. Nice big breaths, compassionate breaths. And then we can bring this arm back around, up, stretch it out, any variation, rolling around whatever it, it needs. And then we'll bring that arm forward. Might be a little different sequence than the other side. But I'm really reaching that arm forward. We're gonna circle it around again. And then this time I might take the torso and the gaze up towards the ceiling. But I'm very conscious of what's happening to that right hip, leg, sit bones down. And then bring the gaze more neutral and inhale, roll yourself back out. Okay, let's extend those legs out for a moment, point and flex, and bound angle. Now again, you can use your blocks for a little support. I'd like you to interlace the hands behind your head, a little bit more neck and shoulders here. Bring the elbows in and then drop the chin in towards the chest. But I don't want your hands to do any weight here on your head. It's more that the elbows are coming in. Then reach those elbows out and up towards the sky and then maybe out, okay? So kind of like a circle here with the elbows. So I'm going to come forward. Elbows are going down towards my mat and reaching out towards the front and then up towards the sky and a big circle. Let's do one more of those. So you don't have to put weight on your back of your head so much as bring the elbows in, reach the elbows out and up and then circle them around. Good. And release. Okay. We'll help those knees together. You may want to block. We're going to go into a little bit of hips here, but you might want to pad the knee. And I recommend it, even though I have carpet, a mat, I still need a blanket for that back knee in case you do part of this next pose, okay? <clears throat> Let's go into child pose before we do that first. I want you to stretch out since we had a lower back request, okay? We'll do a few chakravarasanas. If you're not familiar with that, you can do cat and cow if that's more familiar. So in chakravarasana, it's basically child, which you are in, but now you're gonna come up into that cow tilt. So your back sways, tuck the tailbone, exhale, go back towards your heels. Doesn't have to be all the way back. Then my crown of the head reaches forward as I come back up onto my hands. That's the contraction in the lower back muscles to strengthen. And then as I tuck the tailbone and go back, child pose stretches out the lower back, okay? And basically that's what cat and cow does also. So if you're more familiar with that, you can do that. We've got two more. Exhale as I go back. Inhale as I come forward. I like to pause on both. Like pause up at the top of the inhalation, feel the contraction in the lower back, and on the exhalation, pause as I go back or in cat pose to stretch out the lower back. Okay. Next time you come forward onto all fours, we're going to step the right foot forward. I'm going to take the block on the inside of that leg, if you can see that, and I'm going to turn that right foot out just a little bit, maybe 20 degrees or so. And then 
I'm just going to see, test the waters, pick that back foot off the floor. This is going to get into the psoas, but I don't want it to get into your knee. So if it doesn't work, you'll keep the back knee down. Okay. So we're all going to put the back foot down. That was just a little test run. We're going to bring our forearms down onto the block. So say, and I'm just going to face you, I'm trying to get on the same side, is that if I can't get the forearms down, maybe I bring up the block a little higher. Maybe I stay on my hands, okay? And I don't use the block. Some of you just need to go a little lower to the ground, but I have to say, if you're not using a block and both elbows are not fully on your mat, then just use the first height of the block, okay? You can let the head here go. breath and another breath see if you can relax the hips we're going to go in so this is the hip on this side and then we're going to go into psoas in just a moment okay so if you went forward let's come on up bring the toes straight forward okay and then I want to go back onto the same side you're on. Okay, you're on your right leg forward. Stay here. You can still use the block. I'm going to bring that left foot off the floor. Some of us are going to reach around and hang out or bring that foot in a little bit. This is a pretty deep stretch. I feel it more on the quad, but it can get into the psoas. It could be a little bit of a back bend, so take it easy. The other thing you could do, you could bring that right forearm up onto the thigh and you're not down so low. So wherever you might be, maybe you don't have the foot off the floor or you have the hand resting on the thigh or maybe a little bit of quad stretch. That's why I like extra padding for that back knee. Okay, let's release all of that. And take that right leg back. Maybe go into child or downward dog, your choice. See how that right side feels. And even the left side, because you did a little bit of work on both. Okay, let's come forward. Left leg forward, okay? I'm gonna turn the foot out just a little bit. I can even walk that back knee back a little bit if I wanna stretch, more stretch in the psoas muscle on that right side. Then maybe I come down to my block, hang out for a little bit. Your head can stay long, meaning just neutral, or you can release the head a little bit. Keep checking in with the breath and the stretch. And keep bringing compassion. Another breath here, and then slowly come up. We forgot that I forgot to bring the back foot off the floor just to test the waters first. Okay, and then we'll bring it down. And then here is where you'll see, do I wanna keep the back foot off, stay forward, or can I reach that right hand around and bring that heel in towards the glute a little bit? I can hang out on this front thigh, I could even turn my torso a little to the right. The higher I come up, it's actually a little easier on that back knee. But you could be, maybe the foot just comes off the floor and you don't grab the, the foot at all. Okay. Yogi's choice. And bringing in that compassion, that awareness, what we need right now. Go ahead and release nice and slow. Let's all go into a downward dog unless you prefer a puppy stretch, which is the arms out in the front and the butt up, or head down. That's puppy or a downward dog, which you might want to stretch out the back of those knees. I at least have to walk my dog once or twice to stretch out the back of the calf muscles, back of the knees as well. And let's all come into child. 
Exhale. We're going to get active in just a moment. Walk your child over towards the left. A little side bend. I want to address the lower back. Make sure you're stretched out nicely before we get a little bit more active. Another breath here. And then when you go back to center, walk over to the right for three breaths in this side child pose. Okay, yogis, come forward into a downward dog. I would recommend if there's a blanket there, just go ahead and get it out of the way because you're going to stretch through your downward dog and then walk your hands towards your feet. You'll be in a forward bend here, right? And then walk yourself back out, a little opening for the back of the legs, downward dog, bend the knees, and then walk forward towards your hands, towards the front of your mat. As you exhale here, just make sure all those toes are forward, thumbs in the groin, elbows in towards one another, Inhale, come on up. Stay here for a moment. Hands on the hips or thumbs right in that groin area. And then I'm going to bring those shoulder blades really towards one another and lift that sternum. Legs are engaged as they are whenever we come into mountain pose. The gaze is just slightly going to go up towards the ceiling, elbows in towards one another. Take a breath in. Exhale, bring yourself hinging at the hips. Your gaze will go down towards the floor. Forward fold here. Then the hands can release the groin area. Exhale. Inhale, this time float the arms out and come on up. Palms to the heart center. And release. Let's take a nice deep breath in and exhale. Separate the feet a little bit. I just feel like a little bit more energized. So let's do breath in through the nose, out through the mouth. But you're, you're, you've got a gallon of paint in each hand, okay? So they're heavy. You're going to inhale, look up, take the gallons of paint up, bend the knees, exhale through the mouth. Let the arms swing back. Inhale, just three more times. Exhale, keep those knees bent. Inhale, stretch through the whole front of the body. Exhale, last one. Might just get you a little bit more energized and then you can bring the arms down. Okay, we're gonna go right into balancing poses. So if you so desire to have a chair around, have a wall around, feel free to do so. So we're going to put three poses together. So that's why you might want to have something. But let me, I'll just show you real quick. First, you're just going to bring the knee up onto the shin. Then we're going to go in to dancer and then wind relieving pose. Okay? So that's the three we're putting together. We're not going to stay very long. But go ahead and bring that right foot just right on your shin or so the knee's facing forward. You can hold on back up against the wall if you need to. Palms are going to be at the heart center. Okay, nice steady gaze, nice steady dristy. And then go ahead and take that right foot back into dancer. Now this might give you a little psoas stretch, definitely um, quad stretch. Now you can take the left arm out to the side or up to the sky. I like to get in a mudra here, index finger and thumb together into that chin mudra. So I can stay here, working the leg, just another breath here, or your full expression of dancer. Now, try not to touch down, bring both hands around that right shin. I'm going to add something a little different here, is you're going to start Wherever your dristi is, take it up towards the ceiling, open your chest, move your shoulder blades towards one another. It's a tiny little back bend in this pose. My quad is really shaking. 
bring the gaze down and release and maybe just stretch it out a little bit. So that was a little longer than I thought it would be. But take a wall or a chair. Okay, ready for the other side? Take that left leg. It's just gonna come onto the shin, so the knees pointed forward, hips are square, maybe starting with one hand or both palms at the heart center. Find your dristy here, because it is gonna change when we come into that little bit of a back bend. So then that left foot goes back behind you, maybe left hand to foot, Try to bring those knees side by side when you first start. Okay, take a breath. Mudra if you want to here, like the OK mudra. And then if you want to take that right arm up, nice steady gaze. Okay, any expression of dancer for you today. I might just kind of kick that foot back a little bit. Definitely got it in the groin area, a little bit of psoas, if you can feel that stretching there. Now, bring your dristy back to center. We're gonna hug that left knee in. Okay, I might just stay here or bring my shoulder blades towards one another. Yeah, I'm gonna lose it. And then you can take your gaze up and a little bit of a back bend. I talked myself out of it. So that's why you don't wanna watch me if I we go out of it, you might, I might distract you. And bring the gaze back, bring the leg down, and shake it out a little bit. A little wider stance here, hands on the hips. And once again, I want those elbows to go to the back wall. I want your chest to lift, and you feel like your shoulder blades in the back. I don't want you to necessarily squeeze them, but I want you to feel like they're moving towards one another. My hands are in my hips. I'm gonna use my hands to hinge at the hips. My nose will come down towards the floor. Crown of the head reaches out towards me. Now, if a little too much in the back of the legs, I'll just bend my knees a little bit. Notice where your shoulders went. See if the elbows can still go back towards one another, at least the shoulder blades towards one another. Back of the neck long. Then start to let your hands slide down the front of your legs to the floor. And this is where you might need a, wall, a block or even a, a chair there if you want to. So try to get your back kind of long here. And we'll all bend the knees and then lift up through the hips a little bit here. I have to say, and some of you are in class today, we would have been doing our yoga practice in Kona, Hawaii today. We would have had the whole weekend already together, but we'll get there. Okay, let's bring the hands back up onto the hips, walk the shoulder blades in, lengthen. I really try to stretch out through the crown of the head as I start to come up. Hands go back to the side, and then we'll step the feet in. Okay, front of your mats, please. So let's get a little bit more heated here, perhaps, or energized. You can have your block out in front if you need to. We're going to inhale the arms up. Exhale, forward fold. Modify as much as you need to. This is a mixed level class. Take the right leg back. Maybe you want to grab your blanket, put the knee down if that works better for you. So I'm really pushing back through the back heel and out through the front shin. Some of you might wanna take the arms out to the side, T position, I'm gonna go into cactus arms. So I move those shoulder blades a little bit towards one another. If the back knee is off the ground, you, you can't bend it. You have to have it straight and powerful. Take another breath here, nice quad strengthening. And then a downward dog once the hands come down, obviously. Exhale here. The bead uh, table or child. Step the right foot forward. Realign yourself. Take the block if you want to. Usually it brings you up a little higher. And then your choice, back knee up or down. And then cactus arms or straight arms. Now it does make it a little harder if you want to take those arms straight out towards the front, biceps by the ears. Notice how much the legs are working here. 
let them work. Feel the breath. And then bring the hands down. This time we're going to step the back foot forward. Exhale here, a little bit more for hips. Inhale, come up in a way that works for you. Palms at the heart center once you get there. Okay. Let's do it this way. Just step your uh, left leg back. Okay, we're going to go into warrior two. And then bring those back toes in, ears, hips, shoulders all aligned. And then pick up your toes if you can, spread them a little wider, and then lower them down. Dristy out over the left fingertips. Okay. Take a breath. Let's hang out for a little bit. Reaching, see how much you can stretch out through the fingers. I'm doing it so much so that I just feel like from my breastbone, I'm getting a nice stretch. Okay, we're gonna start to straighten that leg because we're gonna come into triangle. So you can push that right hip out to the right and pivot into your triangle. You don't have to completely straighten that knee. Again, relax the toes. Keep the side body nice and long. And you can always grab your block. Hopefully it's somewhere around. Stay for a couple more breaths here. Dristy wherever you like to look. It's your focus point. Nice full breaths. See if that back leg could work a little bit more. Okay, that top arm, your right arm, you're gonna look down. Both hands are gonna come to the floor. I'm gonna go back into that lunge that you were not too long ago. So I pivot off the back heel. Once more, stay here or lift the arms up, either out to the side, out in front, just for a couple breaths. Try not to collapse here. So keep that front body nice and long over that thigh. Bring the hands to the floor. Step the back foot forward. Exhale here. Inhale, come on up. Palms go to the heart center. Okay. Excuse my back body as I take the right leg out to the right. And then you're in your warrior two stance. Stretch out through the fingertips. Some of you could go a little wider, so I might wider in my stance. I might bring that back foot back just a little bit. How much are the arms working? If they can't work so much, then maybe I bend them or bring them onto my hips. Glance down at that knee. Make sure it's right above your ankle and going towards your middle toe. Okay, take a breath in. Exhale nice and slow. Start to straighten that front leg and come into your triangle pose. Dristy wherever you would like it. Keep the side body open. Slide up if you need to. Can you take full breaths here? If you can't, you're in it too deeply, so you slide up. You can press back through that back hip, make that back leg work. One more breath. That top arm, you're gonna to start to look down, bring both hands to the floor, to that front foot, pivot on the back, stay here, or take the arms out in front, out to the side, cactus, or they can simply stay on the ground. Okay. Find what works for you on this side not have to be exactly the same on each side. So I got one side's a little different than the other. Okay. Now you're going to bring the hands down, push off of that back foot, exhale forward, inhale, come on up. And palms can come to the heart center. Keeping the hands at the heart center, go ahead and Bend your knees a little bit, but more so sit your hips back. So what I'm looking for is that your knees aren't coming over your toes. You're staying right above your um, ankles there. So your hips can sit back a little bit. Basically, chair pose, okay? 
Toes lift up, they can even spread. Some of you might be able to sit the hips down a little lower. Nice big breaths. If you feel it in the knees, I just want you to pop up a little bit, okay? But check out where those knees are. Way, way back in your heels. We've got a couple more breaths to explore. Decide if you wanna sink down a little bit more, or even start to come up. For the last two breaths, if you want to take the arms out in front, you can. Biceps by the ears, maybe hands on the hips. Weight is on your heels. We got one more breath, one more breath. I just noticed my knees were coming forward, so I'm going to shift them back. Press into the heels. Inhale, come on up. Then you can release and feel your quads. Okay. We'll bring our hands onto the hips once more. And then you're going to make a little side bend over to the right and take that left arm out and up. Inhale, come back, hands on the hips. And then I, I could even press that left hand in towards the hip, take the right arm up and over. And I look down to make sure that back hip's not coming forward, the shoulder's not coming forward, I'm nice and long all stacked up as I go over to the side. As you inhale, come back to center, hands on the hips, and then go ahead and use the hands on the hips to pivot and bring your head and shoulders down as low as your hips if you can. I typically have to bend my knees a little bit, at least when I first start off. And then I might be able to lift up through the hips and lengthen the legs. Navel in towards your spine. And then let those hands slide down the front of your shins. Right hand is going to grab your left ankle calf muscle outside of the knee. Because we're going to sweep that left arm up towards the sky into a twist. However, I don't want you to let the head drop around. Keep that sternum lifted. The left arm might just go straight out to the side. For some of you, you can revolve a little bit more and take the gaze and the arm straight up to the sky. But I'm gonna look back at my right knee, make sure it didn't come forward. So grab any part of that outside of that left leg. Bring the gaze down, the arm down. Let the left hand go onto some part of your right leg. Keep the knees side by side, bent or straight legs and then go ahead and sweep. Oh, we've got a couple breaths here, so I might just take it in stages. Do I wanna revolve a little bit more towards the ceiling? Do I wanna lift the sternum? Maybe keep the knees, knees bent, because it is a twist. And if your legs are straight, it's gonna put a little bit more or can on your lower back strain that is. So you might wanna keep it bent here, okay? Bring the gaze and the arm down, exhale here. And then just make sure wherever you are on the mat, you're gonna step or walk back into a downward dog. Press those heels down, stretch out the back of the legs to a plank, draw the navel into the spine. Crown of the head reaches out. And knees to the earth. Could you all come on to your left side? Okay. I want to do a, see if we can get a psoas stretch here as well. So I'm going to be up onto my left forearm, okay, right underneath my shoulder. My hips are pretty much stacked. And I'm going to take the right hand just like our dancer pose. Might be easier here. Don't have to think about balance. My hand to my foot, top of the foot or ankle even. And then see if you can take that uh, thigh to the back wall a little bit or heel in towards your glute muscle. But I don't want to kind of collapse in my torso, pressing down into the forearm, take padding underneath the elbow if you need it. So see if you can get, now if I bring that leg back a little bit, I might feel it in the groin, but I might also get it into the psoas. So those of you who so as a deep muscle inside between um, the right side, left side um, from your navel, it's 
pretty deep in there. Okay, release that, but go ahead and extend that right leg out in front. Okay, just notice what this shoulder's doing. Don't collapse. Lift up through the chest. Hips are pretty much stacked. Left leg can still be bent because we're going to lift the right leg off the floor just a little bit. Notice, maybe lift it a little higher so it's as high as the hip. Maybe the ankle, knee, and hip are in a straight line. Maybe not. And then we're going to take that leg back, get your peace fingers ready, and then bend the knee, is how I like to start. I grab the big toe and then start to extend that leg. But as I extend the leg, I push down into the left side. I want to stay lifted on this left rib cage, okay? So that I don't want to lean back either or roll back. So stay on that left hip on the outer edge. You can bring it down in front again, maybe a little bit over towards your head or that shoulder. Hamstring is where I'm feeling it. So play with it. Do you want it straight up? Do you want it out in front? Don't collapse your torso. And then we'll go ahead and release that leg. Keep both knees stacked as we start it. Maybe get the knees in line with the hips. And then we're going to press into that bottom hand or your right hand and try to lift your hips off the ground a little bit. Okay, so we're working out, shoulders stay in stack, maybe that arm goes up. Let's stay a little while because this is definitely easier than if we had the legs straight. Now at any time you can put the hips down, reach up through the top arm, maybe lift the top leg. It's definitely a shoulder strengthener here. Just have to be careful if you have some shoulder stuff going on. Bring the knee down, bring the arm down, and then we're going to swing the legs out, come up, roll the shoulders up, back, and down to a seated position, that is. Okay, just so we can release that left shoulder. Okay, ready for the other side? So we're going to come onto the hip, the outside of the hip, bend the knees. And try to stay on, it's like your IT band, like right down the middle of that outside of that right leg, okay? On my elbow, take padding if I need to. I want to stay lifted in this rib cage the whole time, okay? Let's see if we can grab that foot. A little bit of a side dancer, let's call it. As soon as I do that, my ribs pop out a little bit, so I'm going to draw the navel back. Okay? Now, some of you can... Work that heel in towards the glute muscle if the knee permits it. Some of you might not even grab a hold of that knee. It might just stay back there, just bend slightly. You're still on the outer edge of the left. Hip. My head's coming forward a little bit, so I want to keep it nice and aligned with the rest of the spine. I'll release the back leg and bring it out in front. So here, you might feel on the outside of the leg, which is the IT band. I could lift it a little bit. When you do that, you're engaging your abdominal muscles a little bit. I could even take the arm up here. You can play with it. In the privacy of your own home, you can do whatever you like, but I encourage that when you're in classes too, because I learn from that as well. I get some great ideas from you all. And then we'll go ahead and bring that leg back in. So make sure knees are stacked, hips are stacked. And then we're gonna bring the knee in, get the peace fingers ready, grab the back, uh, big toe that is. And you don't have to grab the big toe. I could go to the outside of the foot. I kind of like the big toe, it's right there. Don't round, don't collapse. Push down and through the right forearm to help you stay lifted. You can bring it out in front a little bit towards the right a little bit or that right shoulder. Play with it. Don't collapse. And I didn't give you an option, but you can also come down onto your, your whole side body if it doesn't work being up on that forearm, if it's too much, if you have a shoulder injury there. You might have to just lay down with your uh, ear on your forearm or your whole arm. 
So we're going to release this, stack the knees again, and one more piece, a little bit of abs here, lift the hips up, okay, so they're off the ground a little bit or not. Just readjust my arm, can take the top arm up so shoulders are stacked. And then maybe I lift that back leg just for a little bit. Back of the neck long. One more breath, two more breaths. And bring the leg down, bring the hips down, the arm down. Let's come into a seated position once more, any way you want to sit. Ah, but let's roll those shoulders up, back and down. And then let's bring the hands behind the head. Elbows try to touch one another. I'm not pulling on my head. The elbows are coming in towards one another. Then open the elbows wide up two more times. See if they can touch. Open them up. And you don't have to interlace the hands. I just kind of have them separated back there. Elbows squeeze in. Elbows going to nice and wide. And then you can release the arms. Okay. So. I think have a block around. This one tends to mm, stretch out the psoas muscle and then I'll give you something else or everybody a little later. We won't do it today, but it can be very helpful for the psoas muscle. Okay, so let's have a block off to the side. I want you to work just a little bit here and get those abs to work. And you just notice how far can I go down until I feel the Abdominal muscles working. I don't feel anything on my back or my hands could be here as well. And then come back up. Okay. Just want you to do a couple of these. Where's your point of compassion, number one? But also where you feel a little work working in the abdominal muscles. And then we come back up. Okay. Third time, you can lower down a little bit more. You can roll down just a little bit more. Use your elbows here if your abs aren't supporting you so nicely, meaning because maybe your back muscles need a little extra help. And then we're gonna go all the way down onto our mats. Okay, let's take a five second Shavasana here. I'll keep my knees bent for now, just because you work the abs a little bit. Turn the head a little to the right. Back to center, turn the head a little to the left, and back to center. Take the arms overhead for a moment and really stretch out through the fingertips. But when you do this, press your shoulder blades in towards your mat. Now, when I do that, my lower back arches a little bit, that's okay. And then relax the shoulders. One more time, I can press the back of the hands, um, the arms, the shoulder blades into my mat. It's contracting the muscles here and then release. Arms by your side. You're going to press your feet in towards your mat and lift your hips off the ground, maybe just a little bit. So when you come up, uh, it depends how tight those psoas muscles are. If they're to either side of your navel, they go pretty deep in, but if I lift up, I might just get a little stretch in there or definitely in the groin area. Okay, just notice what you notice. Do not turn your head. So if you have to see me, have the device where you need it just so you're not turning your head in this gentle bridge pose for now. Lower the hips down, okay. Place your right foot on your left thigh. We're gonna go back up into bridge. You can have the palms down, press even into your palms, lift your hips up. So that right knee is going up towards the ceiling, the left foot's pressing, and I'm coming up into a variation of bridge, a one-legged bridge, okay, pause. You can always lower the hips if it's too much in the lower back. And lower the hips, take that foot off. Let's try the other side. So my left foot, try not to be right on the knee, I'm just on the thigh muscle, okay? Press into the right thigh, lift the hips straight up to the ceiling. Your 
Left knee's going up to the ceiling, press into your right foot, let it work a little bit if you want to bring those hips up a little higher. Ujjayi breath here is always nice in bridge pose. It's closing off the back of the throat, a little raspy sound there. And then let's lower the hips down and uncross. So have your block handy. Some of you, if you don't have a block, double up your blanket. We're going to go into a more restorative bridge where we're going to lift our hips up. Some of you go on the first height. That's usually of the block that. That's usually where I start, and then I decide if I want to go up a little higher in just a moment. Okay, so very nice, right? Relaxing. If it's not comfortable for you, reposition the block. Maybe it's just not on that perfect place. Now, your right leg's going to extend out, it's going to stay on the floor, and just pause and let that leg relax. So some of you might, if your psoas muscle is tight, you might feel it here, you may not. And then we'll extend the left leg out. If this doesn't work for you, keep the knees bent. You can even place your hands on your hip bones. Okay. And then just if you want to, just walk your fingers like up a little bit towards your, not on your chest, but just two inches up from your hip bones, either side of your navel. And then I just lightly press my fingers in there. And then you may, the psoas muscles quite deep, so you may or may not uh, feel it. You have to get in there a little bit. My right side, I can always feel a little tighter, but that hip's tighter, so I think everything gets pulled there. And if not, send compassion into the psoas muscle to release and relax. And then you can release the arms. You can take the arms overhead if you want to try that. You can keep the legs passive, or sometimes I activate them like Tadasana, but my hips happen to be on a block. So play with this a few more breaths, and you can see what happens when you relax the legs. When my legs are active, it does um, engage the lower back a little bit, protects it rather, because the glutes get engaged a little bit. Now I invite you, we just have a couple more breaths, but just to let you know if anybody wants to bend your knees, Take the block up a little higher to that second height, maybe, because that does change up the pose a little bit in case you weren't feeling much there. And then when I straighten out the legs, it's almost like gravity is just because you're up a little higher. You might feel those, even the hip area, a little differently. Arms anywhere you want. Let's just say two more breaths wherever you're at. Try not to make it about your lower back. The front of the body opening, the pelvis is definitely lifted. That rush of blood and prana that comes down into the throat. Prana is the life force energy. Okay, walk your feet in nice and slow if they're not already. Lift those hips up and then come. Re remove the block first and then lower the hips down. Pause for a moment. Bring just the right knee in towards your chest. Remember when we were standing and we really hugged that knee in towards the chest. Tuck your chin. And those of you who want to bring your nose towards your knee, you can. So when we were standing, we were trying to come into a back bend in this pose. Now we're coming forward. Lower the head down nice and slow. Feel the muscles of the neck work as you lower that head down. And then you can release the leg. Other side. You can go down as far as like your ankle if you want to. Hug that knee in. You don't have to lift the head. If you're going to, though, I would rather you tuck the chin in. Work the muscles of the neck. So here, when you're 
bringing the forehead forward. You're stretching out the neck. Now, when you start to release, keep the chin tucked, but you might just feel how those neck muscles are working to lower you down. It's not a bad thing. And then release the left leg. Extend the legs out. Walk both legs over to your left and stack the right knee, uh, excuse me, right ankle on top of your left ankle. Now here, I can feel a little bit in the psoas in the groin area. If you don't uncross, walk it over a little bit more and then stack it and see if you can get a stretch. Arms can go overhead if you want a little bit more. So one last side bend in our practice this morning. Take a couple breaths here. So we're not going to do it today, but I, I'd like to mention it. Um, and it really will help with the psoas muscle, but for your hip and back and shoulders and neck and everything. So that's when you put, most of you've done it, we do legs on the chair. One leg stays on the chair, and then the other one extends straight out from the hip. So the right leg stays active if that's on the chair, left leg stays kind of active. You do that five minutes on each side. There's like eight of us that I can think of that that pose really helps with the hips, so as uh, back as well. Okay, let's uncross. You can keep the hands where they are if you want. Come back to center line and then start to go over to the right. Stack the ankles if that works. Now, if I keep my legs active and press out through the heels, I get even more of a more stretch. If the legs are relaxed, I still get a stretch, but it's different. Okay, a few breaths here. You can change up your arms. You can uncross, walk over to the right a little bit more. So a lot of times if the psoas is tight, those muscles I've been talking about, they can pull on your back muscles. So that's why the one leg on the chair, you would do it on both sides, uh, five minutes to each. Um, but it's, it, it helps my hip. I do it basically for my hip when it feels a little funky. Okay, everybody, uncross, come back to center, release the arms, hug the knees in towards the chest, uh, stretch out that lower back because that was our opening press. And then move the knees a little bit away, inch or two, hug them back in, move them away, hug them in. You got three more of these. Be conscious. Maybe even from here, your head stays on the ground, but tuck that chin in a little bit. Get some length in the back of your neck. And one more of these. Okay. And I can clarify anything after class if you like, since this is a live class. Move the knees away, bring the feet down onto the floor, and then windshield wiper your legs a little side to side. We only did one standing twist, so see how this feels for you. Just a windshield wipe the legs, maybe stay a little bit on each side if you like. This to me is a, quite a gentle twist, so it doesn't put too much stress on the lower back. Okay. And then visit any other pose you want to do before you go into relaxation, maybe even a happy baby pose if you want more hips, or you want to keep the back flat on the ground, happy baby pose is where you bend the knees and grab the bottoms of your feet, but you're still on your back. I came up just so I could read you another reading and get you all situated for your next five minutes of Shavasana. So feel free to turn me off now if you just know. I want to do a longer practice or I want a longer Shavasana than five minutes. You're welcome um, to do that. Thank you for coming to class. Those of you who are going to stay for Shavasana, I will 
bring you out in about five minutes. It's important to feel warm enough, complete in your practice. Um, just like you got everything you needed in today's practice. So Shavasana is a very relaxing pose. There's no effort in here. Today's quotes from Duke Ellington. He says, every person prays in their own language and there is no language that God doesn't hear. You could, if the word prayer um, resonates with you at all, this surrendering posture, this shavasana, corpse pose, it could be a prayer to the universe. Letting go a prayer of compassion to yourself for doing your practice. To make sure you're relaxed. Breath is peaceful, and you drop into the stillness. Now with gentle awareness and breath, we can 
and bring some compassion into that as well, into that breath. So deepening it, being aware of our surroundings. Maybe bring one hand on one shoulder, the other hand on the other shoulder for a little hug again, the appreciation for yourself, for all that you do in the world, and for taking care of yourself in this way of doing the practice. Take your time nice and slow as you bend the knees and roll over to one side. Please don't come up too fast. Enjoy the slowness. What I would request is when you do come out that your spine is nice and long. There's a sense of length from the tailbone all the way up through the spine, out through the crown of the head. And then we can bring those palms together at the heart center. And if you'd like to join me in sealing our practice today with that sacred sound of Om, we'll take breath in. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Blessings to you all. Namaste. Have a beautiful day. You have to sign off. I understand if you um, want to ask me anything about the practice. I'm happy to answer those questions and then we can visit a little bit. Anybody that wants to visit, Namaste. Oops.